first step in the process of extracting crude oil is to find a deposit of oil-bearing rock. This is typically done through the use of seismic surveys, which use sound waves to create a detailed map of the subsurface geology. Once a promising area is identified, a drilling rig is brought in to bore a hole deep into the earth. The drill bit is a crucial component of the drilling rig and is made from tough, durable materials such as tungsten carbide or diamond reinforced steel. These materials are able to withstand the extreme temperatures and pressures found deep underground, as well as the abrasive nature of the rock being drilled. The drill bit is attached to the end of the drill string, which is a long column of pipes that provides the torque and rotational force needed to turn the drill bit and bore into the rock. As the drill string rotates, the drill bit grinds away at the rock, creating a hole called a wellbore. This wellbore can be several miles deep, and can be several inches or even feet in diameter, depending on the size of the drill bit and the type of rock being drilled. The wellbore is an important part of the drilling process, as it provides a path for the oil to flow from the underground reservoir to the surface. It is also used to install the steel casing and other equipment that is needed to extract the oil and prevent it from escaping. The drilling of the wellborn is a complex and challenging process that requires skill and experience to successfully complete. Once the wellbore reaches the oil deposit, the next step is to insert a steel casing into the hole, typically made of steel or other durable materials. That is lowered into the wellborn and cemented into place. The purpose of casing is to support the walls of the well and prevent the oil and other fluids from escaping. After the casing is installed, a series of valves and pumps are attached to the top of the well. These valves and pumps are used to control the flow of oil and other fluids from the underground reservoir. To bring them to the surface, the type and number of valves and pumps used will vary depending on the characteristics of the oil deposit and the desired rate of extraction. Once the extraction equipment is installed, the well is ready to begin producing oil. The oil and other fluids are brought to the surface through the well bore and the casing and are collected in surface tanks for further processing. The extraction process is carefully monitored and controlled to ensure that the oil is extracted safely and efficiently. The initial extraction of oil from the ground is known as primary recovery, and it relies on the natural pressure of the earth to push the oil up the wellbore and into the surface tanks. This natural pressure, also known as the reservoir pressure, is created by the weight of the rock and other materials above the oil deposit and can be augmented by other means such as the injection of water or gas into the well. Primary recovery is the simplest and most cost-effective method of extracting oil, and it can extract about 20% of the total oil in the deposit. However, as the oil is extracted, the reservoir pressure naturally declines, and eventually the natural flow of oil will slow down and stop. At this point, additional measures must be taken to continue extracting the remaining oil. Once the oil is at the surface, it's transported to a refinery where it can be processed into gasoline and other valuable products. But before the refining process can begin, the crude oil must be separated into various components. This separation process is called fractional distillation and it takes advantage of the different boiling points of the various hydrocarbons in the oil. The crude oil is heated to a very high temperature, causing it to vaporize and turn into a mixture of gases. The gases are then passed through a series of increasingly cool tubes, where they condense back into liquids. The different hydrocarbons in the oil have different boiling points, so they condense at different temperatures and are collected in separate tanks. One of the most valuable hydrocarbons in crude oil is called gasoline and it's the main component of the fuel we use to power our cars. But before it can be used as gasoline, the crude oil must be refined to remove impurities like sulfur and nitrogen. The refining process, also known as secondary recovery, is a series of chemical reactions that are used to remove impurities and improve the quality of the gasoline. 
This process typically takes place in a large refinery, where the crude oil is heated to a very high temperature, then passed through a series of refining units or stills. Each refining unit is designed to target specific impurities or to improve specific properties of the gasoline. For example, one unit may remove sulfur, which can cause air pollution when the gasoline is burned. Another unit may increase the octane rating, which is a measure of a fuel's ability to resist knocking or pinging during combustion. The refining process is carefully controlled to ensure that the gasoline meets the required specifications for quality and performance. The end result is a clean burning, high octane fuel that is ready to be used in cars and other vehicles.